prophet named Bob. <laughs> Jesus was named Jesus because God said to. Oh, okay. Hello, welcome to our family farm. I'm Christy. <laughs> He's Bob. <laughs> I'm Hazards. <laughs> that, yeah, it's the same spelling. Hazards, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's start out in the chapel. Mom, that's reading the verse. It is Matthew 1, 21, and it says she gave birth to a son. And she will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. And he was actually talking to Joseph when it says he, she, and it. It's all of us. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so of course we are in Christmas mode, full Christmas mode, in the barn stalls. What do we have going That's on? That's how there? the conversation had started to begin. With. Yeah, it's because it said it would name him Jesus. What if named him Bob? Yeah, then you wouldn't have done what God told you to do. Oh. So anyway, it's a good thing Joseph was doing that and not RJ because it would have been Bob or Fred or something. <laughs> okay, so grab a snack. I've got coffee. I made leaf kuchen, but I'm not eating it. He is eating. What kind of chocolate is this? It's a mini sauce. Gosh. It's Nicolas Kassoff chocolate, and it is Nicholas Day. He got um, authentic German imported chocolates, um, all kinds, didn't you? We have a picture that we posted on Facebook. It says follow us on Facebook. Oh, you can. I can oh. take a picture. Oh. His aunt gave him a new camera, and it barks. <laughs> yeah, you guys got to hear this. So I'll take a picture of the video. I need to hear it. I don't know where the microphone is, so I don't know if they can. Okay, oh, so in the barn stalls. Hello. Quit. That's going to bother people's eyes. In the uh, barn stalls. What do we got going on with the animals? You juggled some stuff? What'd you do? Yep. It was supposed to be nasty, so I put out some round bells mm -hmm. of hay. Mm-hmm. And I By nasty, we mean ice and snow and... Yeah. Yucky yeah. out. Yeah. Yucky yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, so what else? You moved the calves off the pasture because why? So sheep would have more sh shelter. Space. Yeah, our cattle seem to. Gordy takes up a big part of our of our shed, and he runs the cattle out, and the donkey takes up another part. Correct. Yeah, but she'll stay in with the sheep, so she stays. Yep. Um, speaking of that, we did have one little setback. I got a call from the uh, Bureau of Land Management. RJ had the donkey inspected and sent the paperwork back in. I forgot to sign it. <laughs> As the owner of the donkey, I have to sign the paper too. And this is not my first time doing it. I knew I had to sign. I don't know where my head was. But I got a call Thursday telling me that they were going to send the paperwork back to me. At least we made the time date thing, right? We have 10 days. They didn't say anything about it being late, which we we knew because of Thanksgiving and that. Maybe they were giving leeway. I don't know. But um, anyway... Uh, it was funny because she called and got my voicemail and she's like, this is Sarah with the Bureau of Land Management and I received your, your final certification and well, I need it signed. So she's enclosing an envelope and she's mailing it back to me and then I have to sign it and mail it back to her. <laughs> so the certificate for owning Ginger will be held up just a little bit and it's my fault. Just All saying. your fault. It is. All your, your, your and fault. And I knew to sign it. Why didn't I sign it? Why didn't you make sign it? See, so he got it inspected. And normally when I'm standing there with them, I sign it, they sign it, and then we just all sign off on it and we mail it. And because it was RJ this time, it didn't get I done. I walked in and threw it on the bar. I don't know. And I picked it up off the bar and put it on the fridge and said, hey, you got to mail this. And I never thought another thing about it. So we have that little glitch going on, but it's okay. She's still ours, technically, not yet, but... She's going to be, as soon as the paperwork's done. So. Oh, hang um, on. I don't want to cut the podcast short. Do not tape it up. I wouldn't tape it up. You're going to tape my mouth. It's possible. <laughs> don't. Okay, it's so, over, hey, folks. get your, um, get your package. you got to show your package. Because you're taking a, uh, part in an exchange thing. It's right there on the couch. Anyway, so, what else is going on in the barn stall, son? Um, we took on two more Morenos this year. And we kept three babies, and we think it might be overloaded in the pasture, so we may be looking at um, thinning down. But I honestly think that we need to thin down just because the grass didn't grow. We didn't get all the rain that, that we normally get. So, that a hair that looks funky in that camera. Um, yeah, package. Oh, hang on, we're not at that part yet. 
I wanted you to get it so we didn't forget. Um, so we took on what five new ones. We got the two Morenos and then the three that we kept back. If we're gonna thin down, what are we gonna thin? Because really, we thin down to everything that we want to keep. So <laughs> maybe we need to make another pasture. No. What we're going to do is we've split this pasture and we haven't ever used it, used it as rotational grazing, but we're going to. We're going to lock them all off of this half and put them over there under the shelter for winter. Will you stop? Those are Christmas presents that I'm getting. That, are you doing? Nobody wants your booger nose on that. Anyway, so. My draw nose on your nose. <laughs> Santa is watching you. I don't care. He's not going to ring anything. Nope. Heck, you watched me the first part of your. Why do you think me changing at the last minute is going to get in now? <laughs> That's true. Okay, so. You'll be good all year long. In the barn stalls. The month of December. You put out three big round bales of hay. Where'd you put them? Out there, over there, and out there. East pen, uh, West calf pen. shed, and pasture. Mm -hmm. And the arena. Mm -hmm. The back end of the arena is where we use it in the winter so that we don't lose. Um, ground. When you're using round bales for horses and cattle, they tend to make a mess, don't they? Um, it is what it is. Everybody's been fighting how to keep them from wasting for hundreds of years. The point is, is don't overfeed. Don't put on a round bale. Only give them what they need, and you won't have any waste. Yeah. I don't have time to do that to individually feed. How many head of cattle are out there? Not much. So a round bale, it is. They make a mess because they, they live a ring where there's like a hump of hay yeah, and a ring. They make square feeders, they make round feeders, they make all different kinds of But they feeders. don't, none of them really make a difference, do they? No. Nope. You no. still end up with hay on the ground and it still ends up trampled and the baby's still end up laying in it. It doesn't matter what livestock you've got. If you just, if you've got one horse and you put it in there with a flake of hay and it's feed, you will not waste. That's if you have an entire herd, they're all going to meander to each other's flakes. You can't make sure they eat, so you have to make sure there's enough out there for everybody, right? Yep. So be it. It's like goes on. Do not write on me. <laughs> I still have church to go to tonight. I, I didn't get to go to church. It's knows. Advent, and I did not get to go to church this morning, so I will be going to church in the evening. So. I just want to draw a nose on your nose. No. Can I draw a nose on my nose? Yes. I don't want to. It's a permanent marker. Yeah, it'll still come off. Okay, so anything else in the barn stalls? I burnt my uh, thumb. Are you that, telling about what I burnt whiskey? My thumb. Okay, that's not in the barn stall. What oh. about whiskey? She's sore, so I have to take her back to the chiropractor. And how did that happen? We talked about it last week about Eddie's truck and yeah. the excavator that cut across in front of you, mm -hmm. and she was one of the horses in the trailer. Yeah. And so she got jostled you around. Slammed real hard. on the brakes real hard. I mean, it's better that she's alive and a little sore than not so um but we're gonna take her she's had what right at 10 days yeah and she's still a little bit sore and uh if you stop it still shows in the camera oh okay i'll do this oh you have to look curvy on this that's how people take pictures nowadays isn't it you just want to hear the dog bark why don't you just try flash. turning off the flash Right, right now, okay, stop. You're messing up our video. Oh, oh, here. I got this. Just turn off the flash. Ah, oh, I shot that right in my eyes. I stuck my <laughs> finger back in my eyes. <laughs> anyway. Here, little pusher. Pusher runs anytime RJ does it because normally he's wanting to rope him. Okay, oh, anyway, come back to the podcast. Quit. Come on. Okay. Back to the podcast. Not with that. Okay. I now have a picture of your table cloth. Hi. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so, what is with whiskey? She can go see a chiropractor again. And get stretched out and get yeah. all back in alignment. Um, how often do we have to do that? We shouldn't have had to do it, but because of her... We don't know what happened in the trailer. She slammed on the brakes, correct? She yeah. hadn't had any problems up until that point. Talk to them about the horse, please. Yes. So she's going to have to go see the chiropractor. That's what you said three times. Yeah. Okay, so what's out? Her legs, her back, her head, know. her neck, what? She's limping. 
so I'd assume okay, my front, left shoulder. Front. Okay, and that's what the chiropractor worked on last time, right. correct? <laughs> okay, so she may have a reoccurring um, injury that we have to baby. So we call them hot house horses, and pretty much when the bull you call. tried to mount her, it's just a term that means um, we have to take extra care. Um, she can't be turned out and be beat up on by the other horses or, you know, something that has to be coddled is called a hot house bull, a hot house horse, a hot, whatever. Stop it. I'm starting to get irritated. <laughs> I'm serious. Very full. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I need you to download all those. There's 24 of them. We'll see. Yes, please. Please, please, we'll please. see. Okay, so anyway, whiskey. Um, the chiropractor took care of it last time, so we have no cause to think that he won't take care of it this time. Correct. Right. So she'll go back, and worst case scenario, she'll have to go back anytime anything happens. We'll have to take it easier on her. Um, she'll just be for roping, not for working big cattle, um, like big cows and bulls. She won't be doing um, just that kind of stuff. Correct. Mm -hmm because roping doesn't hurt her. You have shoes on her and she slides pretty mm -hmm. good. And we don't know that those shoes didn't make her slide in the trailer a little bit and she just wasn't ready for it when it hit the brakes because the shoes are only on her back feet, aren't they? No, she's got four on. Does she have four on? Okay, so it, it's the first time she's ever had to slam on the brakes in the trailer with shoes on. Um, all right, anything else in the barn stall? No. Okay, uh, mending fences. Do I have my truck back in? Nope. Okay. So, the truck is done. And it's been done since Thursday, correct? Not all the way done. Okay. Technically, the body people are done with it until we get them more parts. Mm -hmm. Because we're beefing up the truck. Mm -hmm. So, the insurance came and they supposedly cut a check. Not Thursday, but last Thursday. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yep. Okay. So, I get a call Thursday, the truck is done, it, with the exception of the new, um, it's a bumper cattle guard, whatever. Um, the bumper and cattle guard that I'm putting on it was actually like $200 cheaper than the bumper and cattle guard that they took off of my truck. Mm -hmm. So I'm saving a little bit of money and beefing up the truck at the same time. Next time if we hit something, it won't do as much damage to the truck, correct? Well, depending on what it is. According to the body man, if you hit a big semi, it's not going to protect you. But anyway, um, if I hit a deer or a cow or whatever, it's going to save our truck. Mm -hmm. And since he's hit a cow and I've hit a deer, we think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I have to get the insurance check to put with my deductible because that's the money that's going to buy that new bumper. Um, so the money is in that check to cover the parts, which is great, but it's considered a custom item. So that means the check has to come in, you have to go buy the item, the body shop won't just order custom item in case you don't pay, then they're stuck with the parts, so they won't do that. So literally I called the insurance company and was told the check was in the mail. Now I want to point out that if I had ever told them that they should cover my vehicle because the check was in the mail, you know they would not cover my vehicle. But because they're saying to me the check is in the mail, they think that we should cover all the costs until it gets here. I'm a farmer. I don't have, you know, a grand laying around. Just not, you know. So, the body shop man informed us that if the truck wasn't picked up within... You take two zeros off that, we might be able to come for that. <laughs> yeah, take two zeros off $1,000. Um, I have my deductible, and I offered to pay that to the body man. He said that doesn't cover it and release your truck. It's only like, what, $450? And with the difference of the bumper, it actually only comes out to my out-of-pocket for me like 178 bucks. That's not enough to pick up my truck. <laughs> So anyway, um, you're going to go get the bumper. And then I got the check Saturday. So I was really super excited. But guess what? RJ? People that sell bumpers are closed until Tuesday. The man has my bumper. It's on hold for me. And I can come pick it up Tuesday. 
So, Tuesday morning, somebody, because he loves me, is going to go get the bumper by noon, drop it off at the body shop. Today I'm writing a check and dropping it off with them. Um, it's a small town, so I'm going to drop it off at his mother-in-law's house. So that way it's paid for. The bumper, when we get it, they're going to take that afternoon, Tuesday, put it up there, and then Tuesday after work, what's going to happen? What's going Barring happen? national disaster, it should be done. Yes. Barring national disaster, and I should be able to pick it up Thursday after work, correct? Well, as long as it runs. Or Tuesday. <laughs> it will run. It will run. Um, they replaced everything that had to be replaced, and so, and so mechanically it's sound. But, yeah, that's the saga with the truck, and I have now been told by an insurance company the check is in the mail. Quick, wiggle in the camera. And they didn't really like it when I asked them if uh, they, they were going to cover my vehicle if I said that to them. <laughs> yeah. That lady was just, she thought it was funny. I said, you're laughing. I'm serious. I want my truck. And she goes, well, but after 10 days, if it's done for 10 days and it sits there, he starts um, charging storage. And I told her that. She's like, if that check isn't there by Monday, you call me and we'll overnight you one. Because <laughs> guess what? Isn't it Tuesday or Wednesday? Because it was done Thursday. Um, they considered it done because we had not provided the, the custom parts. So it was done Thursday. I got the call. So it would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, so technically Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. No, because I got the call last Thursday, right? So it's only been like six days. So I've got a few days. Anyway, yeah, they were going to overnight me one Monday to make sure I had it by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anything else going on in many fences? No. Okay. Uh, yarn farm. Why haven't you brought in my stuff so I can get ready for the fiber thing? Oh, I just broke all these. I know. Yep. But you didn't do it this way. Oh, yeah, you did. Cool. Yeah, I broke them off. Okay, so, hey, why have we not gotten our stuff ready for where we go? That's almost done. You well, can have it back since you tell us. What am I waiting on? You're waiting on me to bring all the stuff in from the barn so you need to start working on everything. To that up. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's... That simple. That's simple. He hasn't brought it all in. So, okay. There's two more over there. Keep going. Find some more. Um, keeps him entertained. All right. What's after um, yarn farm? In the garden? No. In the um, in the field. It's cold. The garden. It is. I still haven't been down there. I need to get down there and um, check my gourd. But I've been so busy with Christmas. I haven't. They can be drying on the vine, can't they? I hope so. Me too. I'm going to get down there this week and uh, see what I've got going on. I've got to. All right. In the farmhouse. Now. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. What? You have a package. What's the package for? Is it for us or going out? Oh, it came in. It's for us. No, it's not. It's awesome. I love it. I'm going to sleep with it and call it Fred. And it will cuddle with me and become my best friend. Okay, then Willow Creek will be upset. Possibly. So I will mail Fred. Okay, so we're calling it Christmas Exchange. I can't remember what the politically correct. It's, it's like a winter, a winter gift Fred. exchange. Okay, what's the exchange called? Fred's going away party. <laughs> Fred's going away party. <laughs> uh, Anyway, so it's Everybody like a says. winter solstice gift exchange. It's Christmas, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, and it's a kid's gift exchange, correct? Yes, yes it is. Okay, so oh, we're not going to tell what's in there, but we've had a really cool idea. Let's tell who it, okay, it's got to be, it was supposed to be mailed out yesterday, but our post office closed early, so, or they don't know Friday, on yeah, on Friday. Um, so it goes to Willow Creek Homestead, and it's from us, right? Or from RJ. Now, there's four children at Willow Creek Homestead. So, how? It's wrapped five times. Four times. Four times. Sorry. And it starts with, I, I actually spoke to Trish on the phone, and the oldest is going to take first wrapping off, 
and then go by age so that when it gets down to the youngest and she rips the wrapping paper off, it'll be fine. Um, so first it's just the outside brown paper, then it's Christmas paper, then it's a layer of white paper, and then it's Christmas paper again. Right? Mm -hmm. So one gift, four unwrappings. They're going to have fun, I hope. <laughs> so. As long as I just don't go. Now, I will say this, off. and I'm not going to tell you. No, Trish knows how we've done it, and she knew to start with the oldest and, you know, and be real careful because they're only supposed to take off a layer so that everybody gets to unwrap. Then um, there is one thing that we included, and I won't tell you what it is, or you'll have to see it in their video, but we thought it would be cool to have a, it is what it is. a Christmas ornament from our tree on their tree. So it's a present. That's what it is. It's what's in present. it? I'm talking about the ornament. Well, you just told so, them what was in it. It's a present. But it's not an ornament. The present isn't. It's an extra. Shut up. Hang the, you guys can hang the gift on the tree. <laughs> no. It would make a nice tour. We Just thought it out. would be cool if we had one. And I make all of our Christmas decorations that are on our tree, or I used to. Fred would so like to sit on the tree. I grabbed one that I thought was appropriate. Mm -hmm. Fred would like to And on the tree we though, mailed it. You stop. You know, you need to tell them whoever it is. And we already have some moronic thing on our Christmas tree because of you. Oh, Fred Go would be get good it. on the tree. No, he won't. Go get it. I hope they enjoy Fred. Yes. Willow Creek will. Willow Creek will. It's going out first thing Monday morning, and it will get there in plenty of time for them to make a video. So be looking for those. It's a collaboration, and there was a bunch of kid homesteads that got together, and there's a, a money limit. It wasn't a very expensive thing to do, and we're all going to make videos. And RJ is supposed to get something back, but I did get a message and asked what his favorite color was, and favorite color is pink. Oops, don't, not yet. Wait. His favorite color is pink, and it, then they didn't believe me. I had to actually show them that RJ's phone case is pink, his room is pink. <laughs> okay. Sandy Claus, this is, this is what she told me to get. Bow, that bow, is bow. not what I told them to get. Everybody gone surfing, surfing in the USA. Everybody gone surfing. Okay, so that's one of RJ's. Okay, RJ, who is this? Egbert. Okay. We mailed an egg around the world. No, around the United States. Oh, yeah. And people actually signed it. Mm -hmm. This was done in, let's see, Tyler from Arkansas, who's his cousin, did it. In 04. He's 10 yep. years old. He, yes, he's 10 years old. Um, I'm trying to read some of the others. We glittered over well, it. He's over say, 10 years old. I mean, uh, but... This is uh, Aunt Jane, Nana. Wow, he's almost 15 years old, Mom. Next Christmas and then, will be 15 years old. And there's a signature right between his eyes. Okay, so he was a raw. He will, but we mailed him as a raw egg as a science experiment. Did we not? Yeah. And we mailed him with his face and his eyes, and he was just an egg. Then when he came home, we blew him, and no, he did not get broke in the mail. We actually opened it in the post office, and were advised that we should not have done that when the box came back to us. So. He is now on our Christmas tree because we just couldn't get rid of him. He was RJ's friend, and he called him Egbert, and that was 10 years ago. Now everything's Bob or Fred. So, anyway, what else we got going on? Hmm? How about no days off? Hold on. Oh, God, he's tearing up the Christmas tree. Ah, he's as bad as having a cat. Oh, yeah, I get my can of Coca-Cola off the Christmas tree. Yeah, he's got a can of Coca-Cola that hangs on there, too. A little mm -hmm. Christmas ornament. All right. Is there anything else that everybody needs to know? Yeah. Second week of Advent. I'll yeah. go to church today. That's what? I need to know. What? It's cold outside, folks. And I don't mean just like cold, like a 45 degree cold. I mean, it's cold outside. There was frozen things out there. That's really cold, okay? And I'm a wuss about the cold. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to take me like Mexico, South Texas, Florida, let me know. I will get a passport or whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll shove myself in a suitcase. When he was younger, we used to go and spend New Year's with his Aunt Bobby in Florida. Because he was a wuss about the cold. So, New Year's Day, we would spend playing at the beach. <laughs> it's cold, though. It's cold here. Okay. We're off of here. We wasted 25 minutes of people's time. Right? Glad to know. Hopefully, next week we'll get a truck back. 
right? Well, nice announcement to enter into the podcast. Mom driving at the camera. Yay! <laughs> no. We'll see, but I will show you the beefed up bumper. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Your tongue is red. Why is it red? Is that blood? Oh my god. That's beastie. Mm, it's the only reason he's sweet. Uh uh-uh. uh. Alright, we'll see you next time. Bye. Peace out, girl scout.